the next pair is Michael Reynolds and Tim Moore. So, Michael. Yes. Uh, Michael is the editor in chief of Europa Editions, and y have you done translation as well? I have. The, yeah, from Italian. And French and German. Oh, really? Okay, okay. Um, and um, Tim uh, is the translator of nine German novels. Um, he spent several years as a staff editor at Playboy magazine, where he worked with writers such as Hunter S. Thompson, um, Matt Taibbi, and Harvey Picar. Um, his writing has appeared in the New York Times Book Review, The Daily Beast, New York Magazine, and other publications. And he's also collaborated with, um, he's collaborated on memoirs with musicians uh, Jill Scott Heron, uh, Duff McKagan, and Paul Stanley. So he has this, this other life um, besides German translation. I don't see it so much as another life. Oh, uh, really? Actually, no. <laughs> it's all one whole. <laughs> Uh, and um, today we're going to be talking about um, Alina Bronsky's novel, The Hottest Dishes of the Tartar Cuisine. Could you, could you two tell us a little bit about this book and this author? Uh, I, shall I? Yes. Um, well, it, it's narrated in the voice of uh, Rosa Akhmatovna. Uh, it's snowing outside, have you guys noticed? <coughs> it started. Um, and, um, well, I, I'm, I'm going to steal Chad Post's thunder because Chad is always the first person to swear on a panel. Yes. Uh, Rose is a bitch. Yeah, she really is. She's um, also the, the mother of 17-year-old uh, Sulfia, and Sulfia is pregnant. Rosa tries in a, a series of folk remedies to try and remedy the pregnancy, um, but a child is born nonetheless. And um, it's really sort of... Rose, Rose, I think, is a, is a character who's familiar to us in, in literature. She, she's sort of the, the mother figure who figures that she is the alpha and the omega of everything that is good in life. And the further you are from her, the worse off you are. Um, and, and so she does everything that she thinks is good for her child and then her, her grandchild, who um, she absolutely adores. Um, and, you know, they're awful, absolutely awful things that she does. She's, uh, um, uh, but all the time convinced that she's doing the right thing. And, and I suppose it's sort of a, um, a, a farce in some sense and, and, and the story of this family and the family adjusting to sort of post fall of the wall uh, Germany and, and, and being immigrants as well. They're, they're, they're a uh, Ukrainian family. Um, and so it's their adjusting to, to life and uh, her uh, centrality, Rosa's centrality in the lives of her daughter and her, uh, her eventual granddaughter that comes with that. So Tim, this is the second of three books by Alina Bronsky that you translated. Um, what what was it like? I know two two of them have very um, very particular narrators, very strong personalities. Um, what was that experience like? One of the things I like about working with her on several books is they're actually wildly different. Each book has been really different from the uh -huh. from the previous. Although in all three cases, it's true that they've had very strong narrators. Um, with this one, Michael mentioned that it's sort of a farce, but it doesn't, she doesn't telegraph that at all. So for me, the scary part was translating it. You go through 100 pages, at least when I was reading it the first time, I went 100 pages before I realized that the unlikability of the narrator was on purpose. Or, or I, 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 I kind of, I was worried that, I didn't, I didn't, it took me a long time to realize the humor in the book as a reader, and I was worried uh, both that if I didn't overplay that as a translator, people wouldn't get it. But then again, you know, you don't want to do that either. So, yeah, that was the biggest problem with this one for me was uh, resisting the temptation to telegraph the humor more. Uh huh. Huh. So you sort of held back from making it more obvious that yeah, right. she's a horrible human being. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that, that becomes a very, that, that, that's probably one of the most interesting things about the book is mm -hmm. that she, yeah. she, I mean, she's a horrible person from start to finish, right. but um, the authenticity of her m motivation um, becomes more evident as the book progresses, mm -hmm. and, and she really does feel, um, it's motivated out of love, 
for mm -hmm. her, her child and for her grandchild. And so all of these awful things that she does, they may be misguided, um, but the intent is um, admirable. And, and mm -hmm. that, w you know, the kind of thing that we, we, we would expect from um, a, a loving mother. It's just that they're all wrong. All of this, the decisions mm -hmm. that she makes is, uh, uh, are, are, are wrong. Yeah. And, I and think that's very difficult, I think, for a translator, because as, as Tim said, that, you know, you, you, you don't want to give the game away. Yeah, I was really scared oh, that, really? <laughs> that it would be read wrong, I guess, that, that people just were not going to get it. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. I mean, she's, the amazing thing is about her, she's, um, she's incredibly confident. So that was another part of the book that I really loved, where, you know, she's, clearly making these decisions that are disastrous or uh, manipulative, but she's so charming in her mm. sense of herself. Um, she's always saying things like, and then, I, and then I put on my beautiful shoes on my narrow feet and I <laughs> walked out into the world and I just looked great. She's a knockout. <laughs> she's an absolute knockout. Yeah. I mean, look at her on the cover as right. well. She's <laughs> um, or at least if you asked her, that's what she would yeah. say about herself. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, let's see. Did you so? Did you talk to Alina at all when you were working on the translations? Um, I, I don't talk to my authors very much okay. when I'm translating. Yeah. I usually just have a handful of questions. Um, Alina, because I've done a number of books with her now, we're sort of friendly, but we rarely talk about the books. Mm -hmm. um, and in this case, the one thing that I kept going back to her about a lot were the food items, because even though they're sort of ancillary to the story, I wanted to make sure I had authoritative translations of the stuff from. Central Russia, you know, I was going out to these markets in Brighton Beach to check out these various food items and how they were being translated. And uh, this was four or five years ago we started working on it originally. And I think now you go to Brooklyn and you can get uh, kombucha on tap. But back then, <laughs> it was really difficult to figure out the difference between kvass and kombucha. And uh, there's, a, there's another beverage that's derived from birch sap in the book. And Alina kept warning me not to have that because it had some kind of bad karma to tap trees and... I, had, I told her, don't worry, we drink birch beer in the States, so that ship's already sailed in my case. And <laughs> nice. Yeah, so that was the main <laughs> point of contact with her on this book, was the food items. Okay. And Michael, what type of editing did you do on Tim's translation? Was it Very, very little. Okay. Um, I'm, I mean, I think you, you've heard my stump speech before, <laughs> um, but, but I think, um, well, um, how should I start? Well, first of all, I should probably thank FNL and, and, and you, Sal, because um, before coming here today, I was convinced that there's very little left to say about translation. And, and I've heard many things up here from the stage this morning that I take issue with. So uh -huh. there is still something <laughs> left to talk about. Um, and we, you know, we, we prize at Europa very faithful um, translation. Uh, we don't chop and change things. Uh -huh. and, and I feel that if you if you need to chop and change, maybe you shouldn't have acquired it in the first place. Um, and so the, the kind of translation that we expect from our translators and part of the process in choosing a translator is, uh, involves uh, understanding whether or not we feel that that translator is capable of giving us that kind of translation. And Tim certainly was um, more than capable and had um, proven himself also, also with a couple of uh, uh, translations prior to this, n n not least of which an earlier book by Alina Bronsky. Um, and uh, so the editing was, was, was very light. I did bring one example um, that I, I, I think is sort of indicative of how um, subtle the, the, the editing was and also I think indicative of, of maybe the approach that we took here. I remember there's, there's a, um, what, one thing you should know about Rosa, I suppose, is that she, she thinks, first and foremost, she, foremost, she thinks that her daughter is absolutely stupid. Yeah, um, and so she writes here, I, I have to say that it wasn't, I wasn't just distraught about the, the pregnancy, right? I have to say I wasn't just distraught, I was surprised for ages. I'm sorry, this is not the pregnancy. At a certain point, Sulfia ups and leaves home. So she's talking about that. I have to say I wasn't just distraught. I was surprised for ages. I thought that Sulfia had as much gumption as a garden slug. 
uh, and the fact that she was able to undertake such a Nachtun Nibel style operation to snatch Aminat away, register Aminat in a new kindergarten, and perhaps most shocking, find a new apartment for two without a peep to me or her father did not fit the image that I had of Sulfia. Sulfia is the daughter. And I remember in the original translation it was a, a clandestine operation or something yeah. similar to that. And I thought, well, you know, Nakhtun uh, Nibo, that, that first of all, it should be something that m many people ought to be familiar with and um, the, the connotation, the idea should be fairly clear. And if it's not, I think that it's part of our uh, job as publisher to, um, to, 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 to bring that cultural reference into, uh, um, in, into the market here, to the readership here in the US. So, you know, those kinds of things. And, and it was, you know, they were, they were very, very, very light um, editing here in the you end. Know, so interestingly enough, I've since then started to incorporate German words into my translations a bit yeah. more. I, I like, I want my translations to read as if, well, I don't want people to stumble on language in, in a way that it sounds foreign, but adding in a few German words here and there, I actually like that effect to, to have the flavor. Yeah. Well, I mean, in I think this is probably true of every language, but certainly of English, we use foreign words all the time. So it's not the idea that there's some like perfect English is not just not true. Um, what is that reference? I don't actually know that reference. It's like cloak and dagger. Cloak yeah. and dagger. Yeah. Ah, yeah. That's okay. what it was. Okay. 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 Exactly. Great. So Tim, you often, I mean, you've done a number of translations where the narrators are female um, and are, the writers are female as well. Um, I've only ever translated one dude. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to uh, be the opposite of the cliche. You know, the cliche True. is that most female translators translated. are women and they're translating old white guys. And right. So I, I want to be the old white guy who translates young, translates women. So. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so it's it's been like a conscious choice, or were you just attracted to those? No, it has, and, and actually, the Bronsky was also a conscious choice too. I was really uh -huh. interested in uh, uh -huh. this um, boom in, in German literature by authors who were writing in German as a second language. Sure. Uh -huh. Did you feel when you read the German? Did you feel like there's a little feeling of Russian underneath here, or I don't know? No, I, and, I, and Alina is actually quite adamant about not being assessed that way, also as uh -huh. a writer. Uh -huh. Yeah. So no. I, wouldn't say so. Yeah. Is she writing new books? Are you? Yeah, actually, I'm, there's one coming Monday, I think. I'm getting a new, <laughs> new message. Ah. <laughs> 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 That's great. <laughs> we spread the news on the world. <laughs> um, so, Michael, I wanted to ask you, uh, I, I've heard a rumor um, oh that you, <laughs> you as an editor, have in fact been written into one of your author's books. Is this is this true? It's not true. There have ah. been two books. Two books. <laughs> <laughs> it's snowing. We're all here already. Nobody needs to go anywhere. Okay, I think we're going to move on to our our fourth and final pair. Um, but thank you so much, thank Tim you. and Michael.